So I previously mentioned the software development life cycle and this waterfall model for software development. And I talked about this requirement analysis and how important to have well-defined, fulfilled requirements when, you design, when you're designing your system. Because otherwise it really messes up your end system over here when you deliver it to your customer. So I'm going to introduce, introduce a new model that kind of focuses on that um, requirement analysis. So we're still talking about the software development life cycle. So we're just going to abbreviate, abbreviate that a software dev life cycle. Um, except now we're going to talk about not the waterfall model, but the incremental development model. So we're just going to abbreviate that dev model. Now um, it's very there's going to be some things that are similar with the waterfall model, except for the big thing with this is that it's going to split up your requirements into increments. So you're going to take your requirements and turn them into system increments. And what this is going to let you do, it's going to let you prioritize your requirements. So let's uh, let's say you have just six requirements. That's that's a four, um, five, six. So let's say we're going to denote the. Actually, let's go ahead and switch colors here. Let's go ahead and denote the high priority requirements with a circle. So let's say requirement one, five, and let's say this we're looking for are your high requirement, uh, your high require, high priority requirements. Now let's say all the medium priorities are denoted with a triangle. So let's just two is the only medium priority. Let's say all the low priorities is R squares, rectangles, whatever you want to call them. So now we have our priority list and we can actually, you know, our requirement list uh, sorted through priorities. So then we can say, okay, one's going to be our highest priority requirement followed by four, then five, then two's a medium priority requirement, then three and six are lower priorities. What we might do, we might assign this to uh, increment one, increment two, increment three, uh, two might get its own increment, and then three and six will combine into increment five. So you can take each of these requirements and split them up into different increments. So you could develop this requirement as increment one, then deliver it to, let's say we'll have increment one, then we'll have our end user here. And you can deliver it to your end user. Let's go ahead and switch colors, um, switch to orange. Uh, we can deliver our increment to our customer, then they can give feedback. Then we can use this feedback to further develop increment two. So as I go into in depth on what the model actually is, we can see right here that our requirements can evolve uh, because of previous installations of the software. And that's why uh, this is really focused on requirements and features um, because this allows us to have feedback from our customer and then see if that's what they want and then evolve our requirements uh, based on their feedback. Uh, rather than the waterfall model that just kind of assumes all the requirements are set in stone at the first phase, then it just keeps going through the phases until it's complete. Um, this ensures that we have the right requirements. Now let's talk about the actual model itself. So it's going to start very similar to the waterfall model with our requirements. So we're just going to say define requirements for our first one and again I went over this in the previous lecture um, it's just defining what your system has to do you want to answer that question of 
what this has to accomplish. What is the problem? Um, then we're going to go into the next phase, which is assign uh, requirements. We're just going to call them rec. Uh, assign requirements to increments. Um, there we go. Uh, assign requirements to increments. And that's what we did here. Uh, we were able to prioritize the requirements and then assign them to different increments. And again, like a high priority requirements might not get their very own increment, but just in this case, that's what I did. Um, if it's a very small system, you can still put high priority requirements together. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next phase of the incremental development model, which is design the system architecture. So design system, we're just gonna preview that as arc. So what that does, it's pretty much very similar to that design uh, and design implementation phase in the waterfall model. We're just designing how we're gonna do our increments, fulfill our requirements, etc. Okay, then we're gonna go here and go all the way down here to the second row of phases and it's gonna be develop increment. So imagine this is just the uh, very similar to that code and develop of modules in the waterfall cycle. Um, except this one, instead of modules, we're gonna have increments. Um, then we're gonna move to the next phase, which is gonna be validate your increment. And this is just gonna be testing to make sure it meets all the requirements. And then after that, it's going to go into the integration phase. So integrate the increment with the system. So very similar to that integration of the modules in the previous waterfall cycle. And then we're gonna to go to the final phase, which is validate the system. And this is just to make sure your system meets all the requirements of what you defined here in the define requirements phase. But the problem is, so let's say that we have our first increment. So we're gonna define our requirements. Okay, we did that with one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we want to assign our requirements to increments. Okay, we did that. One is increment one, four is increment two, five, three, et cetera, until three and six are included in increment five. Um, then we want to design our system architecture. So let's say we did that right here. We just designed, oh, well, we're gonna include requirement one like this, increment two is gonna be something similar to this, etc. Then we're gonna develop our first increment, which is increment one. And then after we develop that, we're gonna validate it and make sure it meets all the requirements of everything that's included in it, which is just requirement one. Then we're gonna integrate our Let's just say we have something here. We're gonna call that the system. And then we're gonna, let's go ahead and switch colors for that actually. Um, let's say we have increment one integrated with our system. Then we have to validate our system. Well, when we get to this last step, we see that our system only meets the requirements for requirement number one. So what we have to do, we have to decide, oh, our system is incomplete and we go all the way back to this develop increment phase. So once we get here, we decide, oh, our system is incomplete. So let's go ahead and leave a note here. Incomplete, uh, run out of room, but I'll just put sys. Um, incomplete system. So we go back, we develop increment number two, we validate it, we integrate it with the system. So uh, um, I'm gonna put in increment two there. And then we go to validate our system. We're like, oh, we don't have all these requirements met. So we're gonna go back and develop the next increment. This keeps going on and on and on until we have increment three, increment four, increment five. And as we go back and develop these increments, we can kind of see this incomplete system as almost as a feedback. So we can evolve these requirements based on our previous designs and implementations. 
So once we can validate the system, we get all the way to here, we're like, okay, we have all the requirements met, now what? Now we can deliver our system, it's final. And that's pretty much the incremental development model in a nutshell. We're pretty much taking our modules and rather than rather than um, creating all those modules in one place and then integrating them, we are developing them individually, validating each uh, module or increment, then integrating with the system, and then make validating the system before we even start that next module or increment. So it's very similar to the waterfall model, except it kind of splits up those modules. And this is also a very good software development model when you want to prioritize those requirements and make sure you really get them right.